been all over the place. I know you have. This is why we were like, where is that guy? Where in the world? <laughs> yeah, Thailand and then San Diego, so then LA. Nice color on you. But oh, right. take a picture. Thank you. That's great. How are you? Yeah, good. Yeah, how are you? Okay. How did you get back? Okay. Um, when did I get back? Fr Friday. Oh, okay. So you're just. The angle of the dangle was. So. Oh, yeah. I didn't know how that camera worked or any of that. Oh, a camera. Gotcha. Yes. Right. Thank it's you. a new room for us. We're getting used to it, too. Yes, temporary. Yeah. We should be back to normal. It's Yeah. <laughs> Can we make it to have. We need Nathan to start. Do we need Nathan to start? No, okay, I didn't know. No, I'm for good. We're, we're good. Do you have a form? Hi. 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 How are you, Anne? We needed to have four, and now we've got five. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. You're recording. Okay. Yes. Okay. We have the timer in case. All right. Alrighty. Let's go. Okay, I call this meeting to order. Welcome to the September 9th, 2024 meeting of the Art and Public Places Committee. Um, Jack, the recording secretary, will you take roll? I will indeed. All right. Uh, Chair Baumgartner? Present. Vice Chair Kiefer? Present. Committee Member Faulkner? Present. Committee Member Puentes? Present. Committee Member Azadarian, it looks like is not currently here. And then it looks like we are also missing Committee Member Seward, so let the record reflect that we have all committee members in attendance with the exception of Commander Nathanson. I'm here. <laughs> Nathan. It gets, gets confusing. I know. He has the wrong first name. Right. <laughs> or I have exactly. the wrong last name. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let the record reflect that all committee members are here with the exception of committee members uh, Seward and Azadarian. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, this is the time when any person from the public may address matters that are not on our agenda today. Um, but we are within our subject matter of the art and public places. Uh, the public may comment on items when that's called later if they want to talk about what's already on our agenda. Each speaker will be allowed three minutes. And we'll start that when you, if you'd like to introduce yourself, you're welcome to, but not required. Um, would anybody like to start? Yeah. Hi. Hello. None of you know me. My name is Dwayne DeWitt. I'm from Roseland. Recently, I turned in a letter to the Press Democrat, one of those things, letters to the editor. And I got some feedback that some people felt it was a little bit difficult. The letter was basically because the city of Santa Rosa is in financial difficulties. It has what they call a structural deficit of many millions of dollars. And they're hoping that they'll be able to repair it by having taxes. And there's many people in today's uh, economic climate, if you will, who do not feel we should have more taxes. So the letter that I sent said that they should abolish some boards and commissions, and that basically that would be a way to help save some money. There's also other things they could be doing, such as selling some of the properties they own. They've got some properties around here. They call them surplus. Some people call them white elephants, like that bank right over there on the corner. So they've had them a long time. They got deep economic difficulties, and I don't know any of you, so I don't want you to take any offense that the fact that I called for the abolishment of this committee. I wanted to come here and let you see me in person and understand why that is. I believe this is a committee that actually doesn't really need to be here. You could actually be having the different organizations that decide to develop something, put some public art and public space in their developments. This happens in large cities such as San Francisco, New York City, and many other places. So it's the kind of thing where if we're going to have an even worse economic climate in the future, depending on who the next federal administrator is, president of the United States, it could be the kind of thing where we're going to even be having to tighten in our belts much, much tighter. So don't take it personal. Just look at it like, hey, this guy came here and wanted to make sure that we have what they call hard-headed fiscal responsibility at our city. And then last but not least, can I get a hard copy of the agenda? Because I didn't see any. Anywhere. Absolutely, right in the back. When table. I arrived, the door was locked. So I was like, hey, what's going on? Thank you kindly for your time. Thank you. I appreciate that. Great. All righty. I'll go out the door so I don't get in the way of things. Oh, okay. Cool. How are you? All right. Hey, okay. um, anyone else? Here from the public? Okay. Um, 
I will now close public comment and we will move on. We have um, seven minutes which came in the agenda for your review. Are there any additions or corrections to the agenda? I mean, to the minutes from last meeting. Okay, if none, then the minutes are approved as submitted and we will move on to the scheduled items. Department, Department reports. Um, we will be uh, for 7.3, we'll be removing that item from the agenda today. Um, and we'll be moving that to October 7th meeting. Okay. Thanks, uh, thank you. Is it possible to make a comment on that now, though? Because I thought that would be on today's agenda and it's very important. I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. You want I'd to, like to say comment on the agenda that now? Mural. Um, because it was agendized, I believe, uh, yes, we can okay. uh, let you speak on it. Right. Thank okay. you kindly. When that comes up. Are we ready for that now? Um, I would say let's wait until when it, it was. When 7.3 would, would be up. Okay. We'll allow you time. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Wayne. Okay. Um, Scott, did you want to take Sure. Is this the time? Yeah, this is, this is my report. time. Who's the new guy sitting at the table? <laughs> I know. Hey. <laughs> um, so my name's Scott Adair, and pleasure to meet you. Um, and I'm sure I'll get to meet the other committee members uh, who aren't here today. So I'm brand new with Santa Rosa. I just started last Tuesday. And I am filling the role of the Chief Economic Development Officer for the city. I spent prior to this the last six years as the Economic Development Director and the Workforce Development Board Director for Humboldt County. And over that six year period brought in about $12 million in new revenue streams to Humboldt County and grew the economic development team there from a team of three members to nine and increased the programs that Humboldt County was managing for economic and workforce development by about 300%. Uh, so I'm hoping to be able to do the same thing here. My primary function and my primary role and responsibility is to help to implement and effectuate the economic development strategic plan of which the arts is critical and to support Meredith and Jack and Raphael and Bryce and others with the resources they need, the guidance, the budget, what they're asking for um, in order to continue to do the good things that they're doing. So I'm looking forward to working with all of you, but not uh, um, replacing or um, really trying to step in on what Meredith's doing with this committee. Um, she'll continue to be your primary point of contact, but I'll be available as a resource as well. And I will say that um, probably 40 years ago, my father was the uh, executive director for the Arts Council in Kern County. And so I grew up with the arts being very important. Uh, and I understand culturally why art and art in public places really is critical to developing prosperity in a community. And so I'm really jazzed about working with Meredith on all that. So uh, thanks for the opportunity. And I, I will probably have to, um, I might have to bounce in and out of here um, to take care of a couple things. So I'll try not to be disruptive, Chair. So Thanks. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Nice to meet you. Yeah. Excellent. Comment, please. OK. Uh, I think that's. I don't know exactly how we. I'm, I'm still learning this yeah, process. So that's I'm, that's why I'm a little stuttering with it. Oh, no problem. No, it's OK. Not act each other. I'm not sure we have comments on this um, at this time on reports. So I think you might need to really, so we get to the item that Actually, does have Mr. comments. Brown Act, each item on the agenda does allow the public to speak on that item on the okay. agenda. Okay. Thank you kindly. It's nothing it's mean. I just like to know that they already give you business cards, buddy. I don't have business cards. Can yet. I get your email then, sir? Yes. It is S Adair, A D A I R at srcity.org. But bear in mind I just found the sticky notes the other day. <laughs> so I'm I'm still trying to get caught up on just the basic orientation um, and acclimating. So I'm probably going to be just asking a lot of questions in the beginning before I'll be answering a lot of questions, yeah. I'm sure. So I'd be more than glad to take you for a walk around town. I'm from here. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
now scheduled items. <laughs> um, do you want to take it away, Meredith? 7.1. Yes, thank you. Solid fountain. And Hugh. Yes. Um, am I supposed to? Uh, let's, sorry about that. Um, you will present a project update on the Ruth Asawa Fountain in Courthouse Square, and the recommended action for us is discussion. Yes. So here thank you. Know, you. Sorry about that. Um, so at the last meeting um, on August 5th, I believe, um, the topic did come up on the fountain. Yeah. Um, so today we'll be providing you with an update and some um, fun discussion items on, on moving forward, um, which you will be presenting on as well. So a little bit on the project background. Um, the Sawa Fountain um, displays the panels of sculptor Ruth Asawa, and that was installed in 1987 in Portland Square. Um, the panels, when they were originally made, were meant to be bronze. Um, but because of budget limitations, um, they were fabricated in glass fiber reinforced cement pieces. Um, when we reunified Courthouse Square in 2016, um, it was necessary to demolish the fountain. And um, we had plans to redesign the new fountain at the south end of the square. Um, Hugh Futrell Corporation and City of Santa Rosa entered an agreement for Hugh Futrell Corporation to rebuild the base fountain um, and the city to um, repour the panels. So we, uh, because they were deteriorating, um, we couldn't, you can't reattach them to the new fountain. And so the city of Santa Rosa set aside 300,000 in PG&E settlement funds to recast these panels in bronze. Uh, this is an overview of the project location on the south side um, of Courthouse Square. Um, and a little more on the Asawa panels. Um, they are currently being stored with Atho Fine Art Services. Um, and we've contracted with Artworks Foundry for the repouring of these panels. Um, I have a meeting with them on Wednesday to review uh, the next steps um, to ensure that once the base fountain is built, um, we do have to wait to pour the panels once that's built because we want to make sure the measurements are absolutely exact. Um, but I want to understand their timeline once that is too. So I'll probably be getting more and more information as we move forward. And Hugh is here today um, to discuss the fountain design, um, tile color, and concrete color. So Hugh, do you want to sure, turn? Sure, sure. Should I just join you? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's perfect. perfect. Absolutely. You can be Nathan for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah. Right there. Or, or, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Well, it's a pleasure to meet those of you who I've never met before, and a pleasure to re-meet a number of you that I know fairly well. Um, so just for background on, for those who aren't aware of my company, and why we have a role in this uh, with the city, and with the Downtown Action Organization uh -huh. as well, as a matter of fact. Um, we've been in business in Santa Rosa for 40-some um, years, actually, and built a lot of buildings, including downtown. Many of you may, you know, may, may know that. Um, and uh, all kinds of buildings, including the restoration of the Empire Building and the hotel that's right on the square. And uh, the Art House uh, program project, which is a modernist building on 7th Street, operated as a hotel, and many other things. I won't belabor that except to say that, that personally, as a former public official and as a businessman, my company has a pretty serious and dedicated commitment to uh, the development of downtown Santa Rosa, including the arts, as a matter of fact. Uh, my son, by the way, is a composer in Norway, so on, on the music side, we have a, have a connection there. Where he developed those skills, I don't know. He didn't get, <laughs> didn't get it from me. So uh, our art house project um, uh, led to some discussions with the city about using the rec and parks fees from that development to help subsidize the cost of the fountain. And uh, that's part of what will be spent in order to recreate the fountain. There will be quite a large additional pro bono commitment that's going to come from my company as well, as well as from funds that have been raised by the Downtown Action Organization. Um, Downtown Action Organization administers the, the local business development district in downtown. Um, it is, uh, it uh, collects assessments uh, for various services, 
uh, in the downtown core. But these dollars for the phone are all donations from third parties through the through the DAO. So as uh, Meredith described, this is really two projects. One is to reconstruct the, the fountain, pretty much consistent with the plans that the city developed when Cordell Square was unified. There's designs that were part of that plan. It was never intended that the fountain would be built with that square, but the square redesign was done to anticipate that ultimately those panels that were on the former Azawa uh, fountain um, could be reinstalled because that fountain had to be demolished for the unification of the square. Um, so that basic design is, it, the location and the basic design is, is, is fixed. Um, there are some design elements that, uh, you know, your opinion is, is solicited, but I'll give you some, some further background. Um, it's a pretty big fountain, actually, when you look at the sheer size and the number of panels. These panels will, as Meredith described, be bronze. One of our particular concerns in building and working with the structural engineer on the phone was to make sure that when it's built, the panels really fit and they really can be installed successfully. What a disaster it would be if that yeah. didn't happen. So what will happen is been a tremendous amount of work by my staff on this and by the city. By the way, the city has been a wonderful partner in this process. When the, fount when the, when the actual fountain uh, structure is completed, uh, there will be areas for the panels to be installed on, on all sides. The foundry will come back out and they will remeasure what we think is correct uh, so that they can make sure that what they cast actually fits. Now, they're not only going to be casting, they're going to be anticipating the way that, that these uh, panels are attached to the concrete. It, it's, a, it's kind of an invisible uh, structural system that will be attaching the panels to the concrete. And that will also be part of the city scope of work, not, uh, not ours. Yeah. Um, have I taken your chair? No, 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 no. no. Oh, you oh, fine. Okay. Um, so right now we've surmounted all the technical issues about making sure that the fountain can actually be built and we're completing the bid process right now and updating pricing. The two big items are the concrete and the actual fountain, which will be done on a design build basis um, with my company um, in order to make, make uh, that all, all get done. The uh, kiosk buildings on the south side of the square include the electrical connections and plumbing connections to be able to extend it to the fountain location. So again, there's been forethought all the way along on how the, the fountain would, would actually function. Um, there will be, I'm hoping that the, that the fountain will be under construction, commence construction uh, uh, before the end of the year and completion at some point um, in the second quarter. Earlier is always better here. This has taken sometimes feel like a lifetime to get where, where we are. Once that's done and the foundry comes out, they then will schedule how long it's going to take to cast it and come back and, and work with the city. Um, the construction area where, where it will occur will be fenced, um, and whatever events might otherwise occur there will have to be in some manner relocated. So from a design standpoint, one of the questions is, what are these tiles going to be like on the inside of the fountain that the water spills over? And what our recommendation is, you know, the classic blue. Um, the, there's some interesting issues, though, about how bright those blues are in the light, in the, in, given the fact that uh, a couple things. One, you've got a strong west exposure and to some degree a southern exposure there. This isn't going to be in shadows. The former Azawa fountain was sometimes in shadows because it was pushed to the west part of the site and you had structures there. So you're going to have a brighter resonance to, to these colors. Secondly, the former Azawa panels, as you saw, were basically kind of beige, the fiber cement things. This, of course, is going to have a whole different color tone uh, with, with the bronze. Um, and that gives you a sense of how it's it's supposed to uh, to be. We did not do all those drawings, by the way. They they came 
from 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 the city's original consultants who worked on this back in uh, when the square was unified, uh, which is now several years. But you can get an idea. The pa the panels march all the way around. They're big, they're big and they're they're strong. And the only other thing I would mention, which I think you're fully conscious of, is that the square has been designed with a north-south axis in which the major artwork on the north is on, on alignment with the fountain. You know, kind of a classic uh, design, really. So the question is, uh, what color tile? That's one item. The second item I would mention is that there's going to be some concrete trim there. Um, the city uh, has a... The original designs weren't all that clear. Our recommendation is, is build the fountain, get the bronze uh, panels attached, and then evaluate what the trim color should be, rather than trying to guess now what would look good. Um, the kind of paint that would be used would be the kind of uh, appropriate elasto type product on the concrete so that it has the appropriate life and doesn't just flake away. That's very important. And the third thing I wanted to bring to your attention is um, there is no identifying plaque in the original designs that the uh, city city's engineers put together. Um, um, my suggestion is that one of the existing pavers adjacent to the um, future fountain be removed and a, a an identifying plaque, uh, you know, perhaps, you know, with a, with some kind of on, online link, you know, so people can get the full history of what they're looking at, which you can never in this case get in a, in a, in a simple, you know, plaque, which let's face it also, they tend to tend, these, those plaques tend to get eaten up with whoever is the current group of council members and everything else, you know. So informationally, that's what I would suggest. I don't think that put, my opinion is putting the plaque on the fountain itself would be a mistake because it in and, of, in and of itself is a work of art and it should be left to be appreciated. You all know who Ruth Azawa was and when the time comes to um, get all this done, I'm, I'm sure that there will be an awful lot of attention, uh, not just within our own community, but much broader than that. So I'll stop there Those and answer, answer any questions and I'm sure you'll have discussion. Okay, um, this are committee questions. So I'll call on you if you want to talk. Yeah, Jeff. Thank you, Hugh. Um, it's great to see this moving forward, and um, I love getting the uh, update. Uh, in a prior meeting, I asked a question about the condition of the existing um, panels, and I know that they were damaged. And I talked to Tara Thompson um, like well over a year ago about repair that would allow for the bronze casting to be done without any flaws. Um, I was wondering if there's any information on that process. You know, I, I did come across a report on the panels that stated where the cracks were and all of that. Um, I haven't come across anything on repairing the panels before we pour. So let me, uh, I'll have to do some research on that. Um, possibly when I meet with the foundry this week, I can also get some more answers. Um, since this has been such a long ongoing project, you could imagine there's a lot of different documents and findings out there. So, um, but I did just come across the report on um, the damages and, and, and whatnot. Um, so you're saying that what you heard was that it would have to be repaired some before the pouring? That's my understanding, although it, it has occurred to me that the those original panels were cast from molds, I assume, mm -hmm. that do they still exist? So I was just wondering about that process. And yeah. if, um, because uh, you know, bronze casting is somewhat unforgiving. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so, and I had another question about, uh, and, and Hugh, I hadn't even thought about this until you talked about the color of the uh, concrete trim and, and the tile, but is there, is there a patina that is uh, actually prescribed for the bronze? Um, because the, the tonality of that bronze could, could vary. If there is, I haven't been involved in that decision. 
Um, what I'll do with it, because these are a lot of the panel's questions and I'll be meeting with the Foundry this week, um, is possibly bring this back on the agenda and discuss more about the panels and stuff in the, in the future, whether it's next meeting or the one after. Those are great questions. Yeah, um, have, having been involved with um, major sculpture projects yeah. and, and public you know, <laughs> installations, they just, yeah, um, but um, I'm excited about it because I'm, I, I have such respect for Ruth, uh, her work, and I, I, I knew her personally, so um, it's exciting for me to, to be seeing this happening. Can I intervene and say we're just going to go with questions right now? We want to just like fire a few questions, and then we'll have discussion where we can kind of yeah. talk about like thoughts and stuff. Question? Yeah, is the lighting schema uh, you know a feature in the design review? Um, I don't. Well. I certainly wouldn't tell you you couldn't talk about whatever you wanted, but I but I think it's really the color tones. The lighting is, I think, is largely anticipated simply to eliminate the you know, the the, uh, the uh, you know the water flow. That, that's all. We don't have a spec on what kind of LED lights those are. Oh yeah, uh, not not that so much. I saw one of the renderings had a kind of magenta yeah. feature, and I, I just wanted. I think that that was illustrative and theoretical. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? I have a question. Um, I'm a little um, concerned about painting concrete. I, I don't, I, I, I'm distrustful of it um, in its long term sort of um, upkeep and, and its sort of plasticized feeling. And I, I love bronze, and this, the beauty of that material is such a, I mean, it's alive and it's changing. It's, through the weathering and the patina and all the things that happen over time to fixate uh, concrete, which does change too, with a paint coat. I have questions about that. I wondered if there's other ways to steer concrete. I know you can put it, you know, I don't know. You can put tints or minerals or other things that change the color of concrete or its texture. Um, but I wanted to know if that was on the table. Any kind of consideration? Well, I think we're soliciting your, you know, your okay, view. Okay, yeah. Maybe, yeah. From that standpoint, I, I don't have a negative experience with with, with painting concrete over, over the long term. Okay. Um, I'll give a I'll give one example. The the uh, uh, what used to be called the Museum on the Square building, and then was the Luther Burbank Savings Building, which mm -hmm. is one of our buildings down the street. Um, most of that in the front is glass and metal, but there are areas around which are which are actually painting painted concrete, and you can you know multiple coats with an elastic material and uh, and the right kind of uh, additives uh, create tremendous life. You know that th that is eleven years old and, okay. and hasn't hasn't weathered it at all. Um, there's also not very much concrete that is okay that is really visible yeah. here. It's really just some of the trim ledges. One of the things that can also be done with concrete is sandblasting it to try to create a different look. You, the risk there is you're going to create something that competes with the bronze panels. Also, you've got little ledges that we have to make, we have to be pretty precise and careful. We don't want to do anything that chips off the corners of the ledges, which can happen with sandblasting, for example. Yeah. Then, you, then you've got to patch it, which you know, suddenly we're into it. A place that we would want to be. Yeah. Um, I have one more question about the tile color and how that decision would be handled. How would you, because I understand you chose three things to show us there, one color tone. And I wonder, I mean, it's great to look at something on a screen, but like out in the light and in um, other places, using things like that, places to look and see actual material. We, we tried to get a physical sample of these mm -hmm. for you to be able to, to see yeah. uh, in a timely way, but uh, they simply were not available, too much, too, too far back ordered. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, I am curious about the, the process. Thank you for asking that yeah. question. Um, the, the time frame and who, who, who do we have to vote on it? Like, how does it work? <laughs> so the voting, um, it's not using public art funds, so um, it's not a vote, um, but we, that's why we wanted to bring it as a discussion item um, for your input on this, on this art project as well. Okay. 
So, Hugh, are you seeking uh, opinions today on what tonality of blue? Well, if you're going to offer an opinion, now's the time, um, honestly, because um, um, we want to get things lined up to be able to get the fountain done. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I would like to suggest uh, the, the darker blue, I think a, a richer, deeper blue usually um, enhances any kind of water feature. That's my experience. I was actually questioning the under, because it's really hard to see when we're looking at the pictures on there, what the undertone is. If it's a, if it's a cold undertone, a warm undertone, and how it's going to compete with the bronze, like you were saying, uh, you know, the tonality and stuff, what, you don't want it to clash with the bronze, and then we don't want it to clash with whatever the paint of the concrete is going to be, and we don't want it to take away from the um, Rufasawa um, structure either. So that's when you were looking at these, it's kind of hard to really see which one is more neutral, which yeah. one wouldn't. Probably the Enchanted, I, my personal opinion, that would be too light and bright mm -hmm. for that. But um, I don't know if that will work in the sea of concrete that we do have right now with the whole entire um, square. So, yeah, there's actually a lot of questions, and it's it's hard just to see it up here. And, but you were definitely thinking of the bay waves. That that would be my vote. That would be your vote. I would second that. Yeah, I would. We're already voting. We still have questions. We're on questions. We're on questions. We're on, yeah, we've moved we're on to questions. I think we actually have to open the questions up. To okay, I have one more question. Yeah. Uh, Meredith, can you go to the next slide? Sorry. Thank you. Uh, so looking at this schematic, this, this drawing, are we expecting that the panels will be lit from the bottom and the top, or is it, sorry, I'm a little confused by the, how the light it's will reflect down. upon the panels in the evening time, because mm -hmm. I would like to really enhance that opportunity to mm -hmm. see them at night. I think it's really cool that Unum is lit up at night, and I think it would be very impactful for this fountain to also be lit up at night, so that's my question. Well, the interior of the fountain will, you know, be, be lit up. Um, the the appearance of lighting, though, on the panels around the walls, uh, on the one on the right, mm -hmm. uh, that's deceptive. That actually doesn't exist in the yeah. plans that the yeah. city developed. Yeah. Okay. Now that doesn't mean that some kind of lighting can't be added, but it would be. A subsequent city project of some kind. Okay. There's certainly all kinds of infrastructure there to be able to do that, uh, but but not as literally part of what what we're doing. Okay. Okay. Um, any more questions before I open it up to public comment for questions? Okay. I'm now going to open this up for public comment. Is there anyone that would like to make a comment? Yes. Thank you. One of the things to keep in mind is that Santa Rosa now has a problem with vandalism. And the young people take it as a bit of a sport. This goes back many years, actually. As soon as those fountains were put in, people began to soak them. If you know the term soak, throw detergent into the fountain, make it bubble up. That happened numerous times over the years. But the concerns I have are a little bit more specific in terms of the water conservation. Okay, you're dealing with water and electricity here. you got different things going on. I'm hoping you're going to be using recycled water, non-potable water. And I'm hoping that also when you're doing this lighting, you can set it up to have solar efficiency so that the lighting can be somehow coming from solar panels on light poles there at the park already and not have to cost any more <coughs> electricity. So I do believe that this is not to create more work for you, Mr. Futrell. This is basically just looking at it like, okay, I'm a conservationist. I want to see the city save money, and I want to see it be using non-potable water, recycled water like they use for lawns on different parks and things like that, and find ways to have solar power for all of the uh, energy needs for the fountain's lighting and for its um, upkeep, things of that nature. And then last but not least, Keep in mind that vandalism situation. 
that is a plague around our city right now. There are two gangs that specialize in this, the Nortenos and the Sereños. They go all over the place, putting their tag all over, and it takes months and months to get them off of basic fences in the neighborhoods. That's blue and red, 14, 13 are their numbers, S and M, stuff like that. You'll begin to see that on those things. And you'll need to have a really good maintenance program to keep these things as lovely and artistic as you want them to be for their lifetime. Thank you, Kai. Thank you. Okay, well, we'll now close public comment and we'll move on to committee discussion where this thing goes. You want to talk? Is anyone, mm -hmm. has anyone held back any thoughts? We were just discussing, we were voting kind of unofficially. Yeah. Uh, when we were looking at the three samples of the tiles, I actually was in favor of the middle tile, uh, the one that had both the dark and light mm -hmm. flux in there. I think that would be a really nice effect or, or to enhance the fountain, especially as uh, the, the bronze will evolve, kind of mm -hmm. the, the colors yeah. will evolve. And I think that that would offer a nice um, contrast opportunity. So that's my vote. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The lighthouse. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or thoughts? Opinions? Yes. Uh, I just think um, often the lighting can uh, kind of become a dominant feature in public art projects. And um, I would hope that uh, there's some sensitivity to the, to the time that the work was produced in and maybe uh, looking to creative in effect that is sort of period specific mm -hmm. um, and is you know about highlighting the the, the the static sculpture sculptural nature of the work as opposed to you know making something that pops in a more contemporary way yeah. that's, that's a good point you know, I was open to the lighthouse too. I was debating whether or not what people had to say about the lighthouse, the bay waves. Um, but I was kind of open. I just couldn't really see really what the undertone was. And that was my only concern was what would be the undertone that would yeah. clash or complement yeah. the high relief, you know, um, I really structure of the panels, <laughs> um, but I'm open to those two rather than the enchanted. <laughs> um, actually, I would I wouldn't be opposed to the lighthouse. Um, I'm I'm just looking at the the upper right hand corner. So the it, it, the way that these um, are lit. And there is a, a reveal of these other tonalities that are uh, warmer tones. And I'm just wondering, uh, what are we really looking at? <laughs> is it like an iridescent <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. gloss um, over it? That's what I was wondering, too. Is there yeah. on that one specifically? These were from the, the um, tile sample book. So. Just right. yeah, for like catalog. Like, however they, yeah. yeah. Like carpet so, samples. Well, and Hugh, you mentioned that the the actual samples aren't available, and and I would, we we did a bathroom remodel not too long ago, and had trouble getting the tiles we wanted, and we ended up having to compromise, which actually saved us money, which is a good thing. But the I guess the point being that there's if there is a uh, an availability problem on materials then perhaps having some flexibility on what the actual tiles are within a certain tonal range, which is one reason why I would be open to, you know, lighthouses a little bit lighter overall tonality than bay waves, but I don't have a, an objection to it. So the vendor has said that these are available, but not right now. Mm -hmm. Got it. Does that mean that we won't hear a different story at some point. <laughs> I know. Some flexibility would be wise. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. 
Well, I'm just looking at Ruth Asala print work, and there, there does seem to be a, a kind of pronounced preference for ultramarine and kind of deeper toned mm -hmm. oh, okay. blues. Oh, I don't wonderful. Know. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 No, that's great. Yeah, I, that, I would, if I was going to say something, I would say I'd, I would hope we could swing towards darker, even if we had to make a tumble shit last minute change and adjust. That we would keep that in mind. That we would stay that direction. I my fear would be that it would look like a pool, like a swimming pool type of you know that kind of bright, splashy. And I don't think the water is the feature. We're trying to. It's only like. 11 inches deep anyway. Right, exactly. Yeah. So let's not, like, let's not have it crawling out of it, you know, in terms of this attention. So yeah. that's just, I just close with that. But did I cut anyone off? Anyone else? Yeah. I wanted anything? to uh, ask Meredith if she would consider adding to her conversation with the foundry uh, conversation about lighting the fountain or lighting the panels and how best that could be, you know, uh, accentuated or, or if there were any thoughts from the foundry on how in their experience um, that would look and then if we could get some kind of feedback on what the process is if it needs to be a separate process with the city to light it is that something that can come from art and public places funds if, if we have coffer if we have that ability to dedicate money or funds towards that opportunity i would suggest partnering with the dao in order to Make sure that that is not um, kind of a darker side of the square, but that it's it's pronounced and thought about. Yeah, I'd, I mean, I'll have to look at all those points, but um, I'll bring it up at my meeting with them to start this week for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, we will now move on to the next item on the agenda, which is seven point two. Thank you. Oh, were you going to say anything? Else? Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. Just any. Any comments about uh, the uh, issue of an identifying plaque? Oh, oh sorry, right. we didn't oh. get to that. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't comment. We got so well. I would second what you had suggested in not putting an identifying plaque on right. panels yeah. themselves, but having them adjacent to whether yeah. it's recessed in the concrete or on some sort of podium nearby. Uh, I think recessed in the concrete adjacent to it on the square mm -hmm. could be elegant. Um, again, I would want it to complement, not distract from the yeah. artwork. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I agree. I like that. And uh, one of my questions was, you were also um, want to do a QR code? Is that what you were? That, I was suggesting that as okay. possible. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, yeah. that'd be great. And, and this is a bronze plaque, so that the QR code would be cast in. No, I don't. I don't know how it would be done. I think that that's a c yeah, city so decision. City, on how oh, okay. that would be with with city funds looking okay. at how we would go okay. about this. Sure. Well, it's, and it's obviously it's in the yeah. future, but it's good to start looking at that. Yeah. And so the QR code, um, the link would. It seems that it would be appropriate for it to go to the art and public places um, website as a. I mean. Since it's a, even though it's not our project technically, but it is our job to uh, share information about public artworks with the public. Yeah, and those would all be items we would bring forth to the committee before we would put anything, um, you know, in that of where the QR code would go and make sure all parties would be happy with the plaque, et cetera. Excellent. Yeah. To mention logos of everyone who was involved to say that this was a partnership. Yes, we're also though looking to make sure it highlights her and her work as well, instead of a long list of. Um, so we'd have yeah. want to be careful with with that, so, but um, I think he's on the same page with that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, highlighting the artist. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, it should be like it could be right. the first cast in bronze QR code. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know yeah. if that. Yeah. The, sure, there's ways to deal with it. Yeah, <laughs> you could have an inset. You know. Small inset in the plaque, yeah. so that way you could change it out as you chose to. Because twenty years from now, are there going to be QR codes or, or ZL codes? Who knows? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. I, I only wanted to make one other quick thing. Thank you for the conversation. Very, all very helpful. Um, I, I think that probably most of you are aware of the uh, Saint Gaudens uh, sculpture on Boston Commons of the Fifty Fourth Regiment. It is in bronze. It's one of, the, of course, one of the great pieces of. Uh, 
of, uh, of American sculpture, just extraordinary. That is lit at night. Mm -hmm. And they have a way to do it. They've done it in a very subtle way, but also a really inexpensive way. Basically, they're just spotlighting it from a couple of ground lights. Mm -hmm. And uh, and at night is just, just it's wonderful. Yeah. Just a thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. And I'm back in small more. I'll also Korean. Thank you, Helen. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I like the concrete color, too, keeping in touch after it. Yeah. No, no, for sure. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. You will see you on the day. Okay, sorry I rushed this out of that too fast. Back to where I was trying to take us um, the 7.2. It's our next item on the agenda Big Belly Trash Can Art. Um, Staff will present an overview of the Big Belly Trash Can Art Project, and the recommended action is to nominate two of our APPC members for the selection panel of that. And Meredith will present. Yes, thank you. Um, so today we'll be giving a project overview um, of this wonderful project that Nick here, the senior environmental specialist, brought to our table. Um, he's going to be um, giving you more of the project overview from their standpoint, and I'll be talking about the call for art that we'll be opening. All right, so we thought we'd start with some project background. Um, I'm the senior environmental specialist and I manage the city's stormwater permit in the water department, just to give you some context. But in 2015, sorry. you're good. I'm sorry to interrupt you, I've got, oh, there it is. <laughs> Thank you. In 2015, the State Water Resources Control Board adopted what they call the statewide trash provisions in the stormwater world, we know that as the trash uh, amendment. And what that means is that in the storm drain system by the year 2030, we can't have any trash in our storm drain that's five millimeters or greater. So the size of a cigarette butt or greater. The city of Santa Rosa has over 100 miles of creek that run through our city. And so you can imagine that once it gets into a storm drain, it doesn't have far to go before it actually goes into one of our local creeks and receiving waters and has a potential impact. Um, so part of uh, the 2015 uh, trash um, amendment from the state board is that we had to actually do an assessment of our city. And part of that assessment is we identified some higher priority areas that were high trash generating areas. Sebastopol uh, Road is one that actually came up as a high generating to very high generating trash area. It was a kind of an ideal candidate for a pilot study for us to see what could work um, to reduce trash so that we don't have to put infrastructure in our storm drain and then um, get city staff uh, burdened by maintaining those that infrastructure in the storm drain. This area is a community hub. It's got restaurants and restaurants. It's got a school. There's a boys and girls club across the way. There's grocery stores. There's a lot of foot tra traffic. There's a lot of bus traffic. And there's just a lot of vehicular traffic through here. So it's got a high level of visibility. Um, in the pilot area, there's only three trash cans that we identified. There's very little public infrastructure. There's long-term parking here. And so um, there's a lot of uh, issues with some public perception for the trash and the leaves that are built up around these areas. So the pilot study, we want to come in and we want to see if we can reduce those costs associated with compliance while investing and in beautifying and engaging in our communities. And part of this is gonna be by creating some awareness through an outreach campaign. Uh, it's gonna be addressing that public perception by getting access for those sweepers to get in there and do those sweeping, to maybe do some more community volunteer events and to get the community involved in that. And then we wanna remove those barriers. We wanna actually put out some more infrastructure. <clears throat> and what we have out there, I'm sorry, go back one. There. Part of what we have is just traditional infrastructure in our cities. There are open trash cans. People can get in there and take things out and it tends to um, create more problems sometimes. And we are gonna try these in the public or in our pilot study, but we also have an opportunity to look at some progressive infra infrastructure, which is the big belly trash can. Now those trash cans hold five to 10 times more trash. They're solar, uh, they self compact and they notify the city when they actually are getting to near full or at full. Um, and so from there, um, our, our timeline for the pilot is gonna be in April of 2025. So we're kind of ramping up and trying to um, conceptualize the pilot study and how we're gonna get the community involved. But all of this is gonna to come to coalition a rate around uh, April 22nd, which is Earth Day. And we wanna involve the community 
in an Earth Day cleanup and then start the pilot study and do that over the next three months through July um, to really kind of assess whether or not this can have an impact in our city and to be something that the city should invest in to meet those 2030 trash compliance goals. Great, thank you. Um, so Nick approached me um, with this project and it's an excellent opportunity I felt um, to involve um, artists of all ages um, in this project. Um, so we will be opening up a request for proposals to seek um, qualified artists um, for temporary art for the Big Belly trash cans. Uh, for eligibility, we'd like this to be open to all ages, um, regardless of your experience residing in Sonoma County. Um, so this is a really great opportunity, whether you can paint, draw, even ceramic, if you were to take a photo of it. Um, also in this request for proposals, um, they could turn in physical work with drawing um, and we'd have the ability to scan it. Um, and this would be available also in Spanish um, and accessible. Uh, so an overview of the project goals, and you can see here, these are some examples um, of what big belly trash cans can look like with the art. Um, is to first enha enhance the aesthetic appeal. Um, so we transform the trash cans into visually engaging pieces of public art, reflect the community identity, showcase designs that celebrate um, the unique culture, history, and diversity of Santa Rosa, um, and foster a sense of local pride and connection. Um, increase the public space vitality um, to infuse everyday objects with a value um, with public spaces and make it more enjoyable uh, for residents and visitors. Um, and it promote environmental awareness to encourage sustainable practices such as proper waste disposal um, with the big belly trash cans. Uh, this is a, um, what it could look like uh, with a full wrap layout. So artists will be encouraged to either submit artwork for one panel or artwork that would wrap the entire trash can. And this is what it would look like if we did uh, four different art pieces on a trash can. Uh, so a little more with the submission details. Again, um, with this call, um, artists would be able to either submit online um, or they would be able to whether drop off their art if they need assistance in scanning everything. We really want to make sure this opportunity is available for everyone. Um, and uh, reside in Sonoma County and um, the artwork could not contain any logos or business names or be plagiarized, et cetera. So for the next steps, we're looking at um, releasing this RFP um, sometime in September um, and doing a lot of community outreach. Uh, the selection panel, which will be nominating um, ideally two um, members today, would be meeting um, mid-November, possibly in December with the holiday. Um, and that estimated install would be um, in 2025. So the recommended action today is to nominate two Art and Public Places members to serve on the Art Selection Panel for Big Valley Trash Can Art Project. Thank you. So, um, can I yes, ask you this now? Yes, you could. Um, so the request for proposals, it said September 24, is that had? It has yet to go out. It has yet to go out. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, maybe I missed this, but um, when you say wrap, you're talking about a vinyl print, like an adhesive vinyl print that gets Wrapped? I'm not sure how the actual printing is. I'm, I'm not sure what the material is, similar to an adhesive vinyl. Okay. Um, there's, right now we're looking, I can get a vinyl that goes on there that can be removed, but there's really meant to be installed permanently on yeah. there. Um, and it allows for that lifespan. lifespan. I mean, other cities have done this and uh, they have a, a resistance service that can come in and remove any graffiti. But really what we've seen in this area is that the artwork is respected. Yeah. And when local art is done, that area tends to be uh, respected and, and self-regulated. And that's really what we're trying to do is build some community pride around that, but also create awareness around uh, that infrastructure that's in place. How many big belly trash cans are you proposing to have out in the city? Um, right now, this I'm just for the um, this is just for the, for the pilot, Roseland. Um, you know, and, and I'm limited by budget. But right now, I'm looking to hopefully purchase up to four of those big belly uh, cans for the pilot. So the wrap around you had had four panels, but the big belly, which you showed us, where it looked like double um, garbage cans, two garbage cans together, which would probably do um, six panels. Am I 
So we're actually yeah. only yeah. doing single cans. Right? You have it right. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. my mistake with that. Okay. Oh, gotcha. So right now, um, I'm only able to purchase the trash cans. Correct. I'm trying to partner with other departments in the city mm -hmm. to potentially use other funding or grant mechanisms to get the recycling can there. And then we would have the opportunity to expand that if that were to happen. Okay. But right now, from the conceptual kind of conceptualization of the pilot, it's going to be one can standalone to see if that works, and then we try to expand from there. Okay. Another question. So the July uninstall, is that meaning you're going to take the garbage cans out? Yeah, I'm sorry. So the uninstall that you looked at there was for our outreach component of uh -huh. that. The garbage cans are meant to stay there. Okay. And Recology has already told us that they would be willing to service those for us. Ah, okay. And so when, and the artwork will stay too? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, that's the intent. Great. Yeah. So the RFP, does it specify what the artwork will, how it will be used? Because obviously you have a choice between a, a wrap around or individual panels and does it specify that an artist is submitting artwork that is for an entire can or I'm, I'm just kind of curious what what the parameters are and, and, and so in the RFP um, we will be listing out on the two different options of what you could submit and so in your letter of interest when you're writing it for the RFP you would rec you would say what um, what your intent is with your artwork. Now, if we come across someone that did a wrap, but we actually just want to use one panel, well, then that would be a conversation we would have with them after the selection panel meets, if that's how we wanted to move forward. Yeah. And so part two of that question yeah. is the selection panel's role um, would then be to try to match artwork to there's four different cans, and each one has four sides. And exactly. Do we want to do a full wrap, or do we want to have four different artists? Right. Interesting. And we've also created templates so mm -hmm. that people can actually color within the template yeah. to mm -hmm. know where those cutouts are. Yeah. So they can choose can a side or sides that they would like to color. Yeah. Great. Lisa. Um, another question too, the garbage cans. I didn't see, is it just for general garbage? There's not a recycle, and there's not... Um, it's just everything goes in there. They do make them to have all three, right? So they do make big bellies yeah. that deal with trash, recycling, and composting. Okay. And ideally, that's where we'd like to be. Okay. Um, but, you know, right now the conversation is, can we do trash? And that answer is yes. And then we're going to try to add in the recycling with that. And we'll just try to expand as we have funding available. But the first part is to see whether these can work within our city infrastructure. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Is there going to be any payment to the people? Any compensation? Yes. Sorry. Um, it will be $125 per panel, up to $500 per artist. Yeah. And um, again, all ages from professional artists, we'd like to, um, anyone can participate in this. Um, it, like a child did one and it was, you know, rough and maybe difficult to transfer, would there be able to get an artist's help in? getting it cleaned up just so it would really transfer well or get it the best possible. That would then do we have that joint effort for the, the art. So it can be artist or artist teams. So we'll say in that RFP um, mm -hmm. and we could scan it for you as well. So if someone doesn't have access to that um, mm -hmm. and that will be um, something we'd be looking for with your assistance as well um, with the community outreach for this project, because that will be really important that people know that we'd love to get everyone involved um, and that we can help um, get their artwork submitted. And part of that process, too, is I, I do work with a graphic designer. Yeah. And so potentially if there was an artwork that you said needed to be enhanced, we potentially could work with them to help get that panel Absolutely. so it wasn't distorted or blurred. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And we enhanced it the way it okay. amplified that artist. Excellent. Right. Good. Yes. Okay. Nathan, first. Just as a point of clarification, the, the entire submission and production process is digitized. Yeah, so then. Correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, except if you wanted to submit us the physical artwork, we could scan it. Gotcha. So if you okay. don't have access to that. It will be digitized at one point. Yeah. But yeah. we'll accept yes. both submissions. Yes. But the artist doesn't have to. Mm -hmm. That's the correct. artist provides yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ideally, I'd yeah. love to get children. Yeah. And, and I definitely yeah. would like to have one mm -hmm. trash can dedicated just to youth in the area. There's just mm -hmm. a lot of um, visibility and viability mm -hmm. with, with that group there. Good thought. Yeah, uh, 
Point of clarification, do you intend to include the prepared templates with the RFP? Correct, yeah, okay. it will be an attachment in the RFP. Great, just to make that access as accessible as possible. Okay. Any other questions? Um, yep. And then uh, I understand we're gonna have two APPC members. Are the, is there a bigger committee that is the selection process? Yeah, it will be a selection panel, which normally is about five members. Um, Nick and I haven't spoken about the other additional members yet, but um, it's usually around five. But two of us will be part of that, part of that five. So you're saying yes. This was cool. It's great. Yeah. Great. Um, I will now ask for public comment on this item. Yes, thank you. I'm going to stand up because this is a serendipitous moment. I arrived here to speak about a police mural. And instead, being from Roseland, I get a chance to talk with you about that. For the last 30 years, I've been speaking at various public meetings about Roseland. And the very first thing I'd like to have you do is limit this RFP to Roseland school children. I think that would be the best way to really serve our community. The Roseland School District right there has classes all the way from kindergarten up through high school. And they have young artists there. So if you want to have Roseland be represented, let Roseland do the representation of its own neighborhood first and foremost. Secondary to that, you should be reaching out to the Sonoma County Community Development Commission because they're the ones that have destroyed our Roseland Village Shopping Center, seven acres of it, to put in their housing development. And some of these should be right there in front and they should be paying for them. That's very simple, all right? And you can be growing this as you go by then reaching out to other things like the recently established Roseland Chamber of Commerce that Eddie Alvarez, the city councilman from District 1, who is right there on Sebastopol Road with his father's property at the corner of West Avenue <clears throat> across from the Roseland Village Shopping Center, has brought that Chamber of Commerce forward to follow the model of the Metro Chamber of Commerce. And you should be asking for them to do fundraising to help get even more of these. And I'd like to see us get enough of them that people would see this is a very positive impact for Roseland and then see it grow. Today, we're asking you to actually think outside of the trash box. You, you folks are eliminating yourself in a sense, but let's grow it. Raphael was actually at the two meetings of the newly founded Roseland Chamber of Commerce. So let's not be bashful. Let's let the kids of Roseland put their images on to these boxes, starting with that four, and then grow the project with the Roseland kids being the ones that benefit. We've actually had an artist come out of there, Maria de Los Los Angeles. So we've got people. I don't want to see another Uribe uh, project there, if you will. Excuse me, it's Uribe. Okay? He gets them. He's a pro. I get it. But I want the kids to have that chance. And I want them to be able to actually represent what they see going on in Roseland, where we've been working on things. Specifically, for the last 25 years, Earth Day events, which we do cleaning up our Roseland neighborhood, which is to the south of the community area there. And we'll be back out there on Make a Difference Day. So you guys could actually start making this happen on those two main Roseland days, Earth Day, and make a difference day. And then if you wanted to be ethnic about it, you could say Cinco de Mayo also. So there's lots of ways you could have all kinds of participation from Roseland people if you will help us by limiting it to Roseland kids first. You can do another request for proposals down the road if they don't meet your expectations. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I will now close public comment and we will move on to discussing. Yeah. I appreciate the uh, public comment on uh, Thank you, sir. Lim limiting it to Roseland. I would, uh, I kind of like the idea of the geographic limitation and making it really community based and homegrown. Mm -hmm. But I also am very aware that the uh, mural project artists are Roseland um, residents, um, Linda Lawyer and, and their group. So I would. I would like to see it uh, perhaps 
limited in scope to ge geography, but not necessarily only for students, because there are emerging to professional level artists who are right there in Roseland, and we might get some really, really nice designs. And uh, the committee can make a decision about the perhaps prioritization of student work for one or more of those cans. Excellent. Thank you. Nathan. I, in my experience, um, uh, selection criteria can be weighted towards those things without, you know, making a, kind of a hard geographic mm -hmm. limit around who can submit. And um, I, I, I tend to have a preference for, you know, just maintaining the possibility of a broader range of submissions with an explicit preference towards, you know, local or geographically specific artists. Does that involve the kids get, I mean, that gets the committee getting to make some of those decisions, so there's kind of more of a discussion within that? Yeah, when Devil and I were on the, yeah. on the selection committee for the firehouse project, that was how it went, and I, I right. found that effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Yeah, we weighted, you know, one of the criteria when we were selecting or you know there was one part where we could give weight to california artists yeah, yeah. We, we did a similar thing with the unum project yeah, yeah. so um I, I like that idea that there is a ranking system that allows us to you know mm -hmm. to select yeah. that way yeah i like that anyone else have any agrees or new ideas i, I do agree with nathan yeah. i would like that weighted and um Definitely would like it weighted to represent Roslyn residents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would really give it a chance to have a, like a, a stronger, make a stronger, like impact. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's in its pilot sort of limit. If it was really well received, it, and um, it would be an interesting thing to watch. Also, instead of just putting art in a place, we're putting local art. In a lot of local art with you know other great things you know the quality up the the current rfp uh, is it maybe i missed this in the um description but is it um thought to be limited to santa rosa artists uh, our residents sonoma county um sonoma county and, and in our discussions as well it was highlighting roseland artists at first um but as, as nathan pointed out um, opening it up sometimes a little larger to see what you get um, and then also as um, running a selection panel you know looking at the weighted criteria um, um, is something that we can further discuss um, so right now I mean the RFP is not open yet yeah. um, so it will be coming right now it's um, written to be open to all Sonoma County residents of all ages and yeah I'm just going to say I do appreciate it how she at Sonoma County because the outskirts of Roseland as soon as you get it from that city, it is Sonoma County. So, I mean, it's they're not in the city oh, anymore. Oh, right, it's not unincorporated. So, yes, yeah, it's right. unincorporated, right. just right. it's it's right there. So, yeah. per, so perhaps, I think the Sonoma yeah. County yeah. is very important to have it. So but, perhaps a, a, just a phrase can be added that says with um, weighted preference or preference given to Rosalind residents or something of that nature. I realize I did skip a little thing that we were supposed to maybe have a motion in place to have this discussion. Sorry about that. I'm learning this. Right. <laughs> um, would anyone like to make a motion to nominate a committee member? And we could sort of uh, keep discussing, but. Um, you can nominate yourself if you like. You can okay. nominate one person or two people. This is the rules for anyone. Yeah, you can nominate yourself, someone else. Um, just put it in the form of intent. Be shy. I'll volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Have we established what kind of time commitment is involved in that? It would most likely just be one um, jury meeting, oh, okay. um, possibly mm -hmm. virtual, depending. Um, again, it'd be end of November, some maybe December with the holidays. Um, I would send out a doodle poll um, for people to. Yeah. Is it going to be in person or? Um, Depending, I always love doing them in person, but if people yes. are um, no. are only available virtually, um, that's also possible. Okay, I just wanted to kind of get parameters. Sorry. Okay, mm -hmm. onwards with motioning. It almost feels like we just need to know if there's 
a couple of volunteers here. In order to make okay. Them. Yeah. Uh, These two are interesting. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I nominate Lisa and myself. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Great. I'd like to represent. Can I second? No, I'll second. Okay. okay. So you're moving okay. to nominate the two of you. Thank you. Thank you. So we can discuss more or we can vote. Okay. Any more discussion on that? I, I think they will offer a very good representation of yeah. our community. Oh, oh, good. Yeah, you're saying you like it, yes. I, I think it's really commendable that you're already working together. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, it's excellent. I spent my first 20 years in Roseland. You did? Mm -hmm. That's great. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a great <laughs> I'm familiar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Are we ready for a vote? Let's do a vote, Jack. All righty. Uh, Chair Baumgartner? <laughs> um, aye. Committee Member Nathanson? Aye. Uh, Committee Member Faulkner? Aye. Committee Member Puentes? Aye. Committee Member Azadarian? Aye. And then Vice Chair Kiefer? Aye. All right, let the record reflect that uh, everyone in attendance is in favor. So the motion passes. Great. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, thank you. We will now move on to the next item. Remember, we are skipping over 7.3. We'll come up next month. And we're moving to 7.4. Sure. Uh, excuse me. I, I apologize. Oh, did I do something? Uh, well, I thought we were going to open up 7.3 for public for comment. Just oh, because that's it was, it. I forgot that. That was 7.2. <laughs> okay. uh, right. So. Did, did you order a Franco? He just uh, got it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can open it, yeah. and then no one says yes. I, yeah, but he heard me say yeah, you don't want to. Is that, is well, that, you don't want to. Do you think he heard me say I closed it though? So it's no, way left. But, yeah. I, isn't that his stuff? There? That's his yes. stuff. Yeah, yeah, he'll be back. back. Gotta, back I think he's expecting the comment. Yeah, yes. Sounds yeah. like. Uh, <laughs> chair, if I may. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> Hello, I can talk to you from right here. Okay. My name is Dwayne DeWitt. The reason I came to this meeting today was specifically because of that mural uh, for the police fence that's yeah. being called, right? Yeah. So let's just look at this like if you were thinking of it as the wall where you'll have a mural, right? And we're talking about this being a police fence. This is a graffiti magnet. First and foremost, this is going to be a problem. What I would really like to see you do is have a chain link fence with green ivy just a nice green infrastructure type situation that they won't be hitting with graffiti and it will be something that stays nice and pleasant and still allows the police to have their area fenced off. It saves a lot of money also. It's the kind of thing though that as artists, people are like, well, you know, we've got to get some art out there. We want there to be art there. I just know the kids in this community have really begun to tag all over the place. And it's really sad because it's, there's not a budget at the city to be able to take care like we used to have. We had a graffiti removal team and we had funding to do different things. The Violence Prevention Partnership doesn't have enough funding to keep that graffiti removal going on. So I'm just asking you folks to say, look, let's, let's look at this thing in a way that's once again out of the box. If you put up a green natural covering of some sort, those things work really well in cities, and they don't get vandalized, destroyed, and graffitied. All right. So just please keep that in mind. And you know, I like uh, I'll rephrase this. I like the fact that the police have asked to have better protection there, but they shouldn't even have torn down that nice house to put in a parking lot, and then be asking to have a wall around their parking lot. This is really kind of insulting to the community that was there in the first place. I mean, been like, why do you guys do this? But you as artists can look at it in a different way. I just look at it like they have blighted that part of that street, and they're going to block it off and make it even worse. But if you put green there near the creek, it makes it at least a little bit more natural type situation. So thank you for your time. Thank you. I appreciate that you gave me so much time to talk today. I'm going to get this card, and I'll let you know the reason I was asking for the card 
is I'm on the Board of Public Utilities, all right? And I've been told, because I'm on that board, I can only speak to the Executive Director of Santa Rosa Water about any items that come up dealing with the water, all right? That project right there is from a man in the stormwater section. And it directly affects my community, and I never heard anything about it until here today. And so I'm going to want to talk with him about it, but I have to run it through Jennifer Burke first, the director of Santa Rosa Water, to do that. I'm letting you all know here in public, that's what I'm going to do. So if you hear any rumors that that guy went behind the scene, that's not true. All right? I'll talk to this guy after I talk to Miss Burke, and we'll be making Roseland a much better place, which some of you probably don't remember it was all in the county. And then it was made a county island 30 years ago, and it took them another 25, well, almost 23 years to end the county island. We annexed in seven years ago. Always good to see you. Come out to Roseland and have some fun with us. Okay. And I promise I won't talk so much there. <laughs> you all do well. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Chair, if I may, <laughs> you're a very patient committee. <laughs> That's very lovely to see. Um, a couple, I've just had a couple of thoughts regarding point of order. Uh, the last few moments of that public comment should probably be struck from the record because it was not related to the item. No, we didn't. Um, the other point of order, uh, and this is my fault, mm -hmm. I suggested to Meredith that she announce the adjustment to the agenda under departmental reports. Um, that would have given the public commenter the ability to comment on this item as a non-agenda item. Uh, Brown Act does allow for commenting on agenda items. However, when staff adjusted the agenda, we technically removed that item mm -hmm. and it was no longer an agenda item, but that came after comment on non-agenda yeah. items. And we have now taken comment on the item. So my recommendation just to ensure that the public comment received is valid and that we're within compliance on Brown Act is that for 7.3, we actually have it as an agendized item as it was today because you took comment on it, but you take a recommendation from staff to table it, mm -hmm. that you vote and motion to table it, and that was an item for which we could take public comment, Okay, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So, yeah. Got a little clunky there, but that would yeah, be yeah. my <laughs> recommendation. Um, I was going to suggest that um, we do a staff recommendation to table that you move, go to discussion, and then take the public comment, but he already gave it. Mm -hmm. So at this point, because public comment was already received, uh, staff recommendation would be to table it to what date again? Um, October 7th. 7th. October. And so your committee could motion to table and vote on it. We should do that right now. That would be my recommendation. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, well, I, I had a question, but I guess we should make the motion before the okay. Yeah. Uh, I move to table um, item uh, 7.3, the police fence mural mm -hmm. agenda item uh, until the October meeting. October 7th. Do I hear a second? I second. 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 Uh, who was the second on that? All right, so I will take a voice vote now. Uh, Chair Baumgartner? Yes. Hopefully we should have discussion, right? Should we do it? Uh, you would, you would call. Yeah, you can have. The, you can. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's. A, I, I had a question, but it was really a procedural question, Scott. Since um, clearly you are um, knowledgeable about uh, uh, you know point of order uh, uh, topics. So, when the public comment at the, at the top of this meeting occurred, and, and Meredith. Um, announced under department reports uh, the removal uh, of, of 7.3 as an agenda item. Would it have been perhaps more appropriate because it had been announced after the public? I mean, ideally, the agenda change should have been at the top of the meeting. But if you, let's say, forget to do that and then you go, would you then allow, because it's being removed, that public comment 
to have occurred at that time. This is just for future reference. Or, and being that he had already been given his three minutes, would he be allowed another three minutes because it's a different topic? <laughs> what, um, so to your first point, you're correct. We can add after roll call and adjustments to agenda um, section. So if there's ever an adjustment to the agenda, mm -hmm. it happens at the top. Um, public comment. Uh, public comment is required by Brown Act, but where public comment occurs, the chair has a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. I've seen in situations like that where the committee chair will then defer it to the end of the meeting. Um, but in this case, and I steered Meredith wrong because I don't think we were expecting this to happen, but I said, oh, just tell them under department reports yeah. that we're going to move that. And then that created a situation where he was not able to comment on it as a non-agenda right. item. Um, but I think that if we have a section where in advance we can bring forward any adjustments to the agenda that might happen last minute because as much as you try to post everything within 72 hours sometimes things change yeah. presenters don't show up etc then we can avoid a situation like that yeah. again in the future okay. okay that was my only question okay so <laughs> all right um okay so chair Baumgartner. yes uh, Vice Chair Kiefer? Yes. Committee Member Faulkner? Yes. Committee Member Puentes? Yes. Committee Member Azadarian? Yes. And Committee Member Nathanson? Yes. All right, let, let the record reflect that we have six yeses and no noes. The motion is passed. We will continue to a date certain of October 7th for agenda item 7.3. Sorry. 7.4, moving along. 7.4 is the temporary art walk. Uh, staff will present a program update for the temporary art walk and the recommended action is discussion only. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to present this item today. Um, as you know, at the August 5th meeting, um, one of the action items for this first year was to start taking a look at um, a temporary rotating art program for downtown Santa Rosa and what that would look like. Um, so today I'm gonna review with you um, my vision, the goals, um, what that would look like. And again, this is, uh, just a discussion today. Um, in order to move forward with it, I would bring back in October um, a project plan that would be approved through you um, so that we can then start finalizing this. There we go. Uh, so we're dedicated to enhancing civic life, showcasing the city's artistic spirit and um, our status as a premier arts destination. And all of that is pulled from our public art master plan. Um, on August 5th, we met um, and approved the expenditure plan of 75,000 um, to set aside for a temporary art program. However, um, I spoke about that more discussion would be needed um, and that I would come back to you um, so we could start brainstorming what this program would look like. I've started um, mapping some locations downtown um, and some of these are available and some of them are currently not available. Um, they may have some planters there. Um, we may have to contact property owners. So this is just a broad view of the idea of starting to connect also Railroad Square and downtown. Um, and the aim would be to transform our urban environment into a dynamic open air gallery. These are all exterior locations? Yes, exterior. So it would be free, obviously, open to the public um, year round. So it'd have to be very durable, which, which we'll get into that. Yeah. The program goals will be to foster civic excitement, um, art that engages and delights the community, um, celebrating local pride and enthusiasm. It would encourage creativity, uh, be innovative, imaginative artworks, um, our growing reputation of Northern California's largest creative hub. Support artistic growth so we could partner with local artists. This call could also be open to US artists. Um, and that's a point for discussion um, of what we'd be looking for. Um, and the idea of starting to transform our spaces. So what is that experience maybe when someone gets off the smart train and, and here's a map, oh, go explore. These are these great 10 pieces of art. Um, and then um, along with that is offer learning experiences. So this is not a temporary art project. This is a temporary art program. And so it's really important to start to think about that difference. Um, so as we develop a program, you have these, these add-ons. You have the educational aspect of it. It's partnering with the high schools, the youth, um, the JC. 
um, doing, whether it's a QR code with, you know, a video that pops up of the artist talking. So what are these add-on learning experiences once we get this program going to really develop it for our community? So I'd like to open up a request for proposals, um, most likely in October, November. Um, open to U.S. artists or artist teams age 18 or older. I mean, again, all of this will be up for discussion. <laughs> um, uh, submissions only of previously completed artwork. So um, when doing these calls, it's important that, um, from what I've found in my past, um, that if someone submits something that's not built yet, um, you're starting to get into this commissioning a work for a certain project and you don't know the durability and integrity of that piece. So the submissions would have to be already completed. Um, up to eight artists selected with three alternates. Um, the alternates would be because um, a lot of times pieces fall through, something happens, something happened with the location. So a selection panel would want to um, set some aside so that um, as I'm working on the, with the locations, we could um, have those backups. Uh, receive a $5,000 stipend, uh, 3,000 on install and 2,000 on the deinstall. The artwork would be either mounted to concrete pads, um, which we would pour, um, but other mounting would be accepted as well, um, as long as it would be durable um, for the amount of time it's up with all weather. So um, could be hanging something in an alleyway, but it would have to be very strong um, in order to withstand the uh, wind, et cetera. Um, and then artwork locations. Um, my goal would be to put together a bunch of different locations and then as the artwork comes in, we start to look at the best fit instead of um, saying you're going to go place this artwork here no matter what. Well, it may not actually fit in that location. The suggested theme for the show is urban renewal. Um, this theme would encourage creative installations that breathe new life into our cityscape, reflecting a vision of renewal and innovation. Um, so along with this theme, it would be playful and innovative. Um, we'd welcome artworks that are playful, imaginative, visually engaging, using light, interactive elements, um, or innovative materials um, that captivate and inspire. They would also be sustainable. Um, so possibly they're recycled or eco-friendly materials. Um, and so it should not only enhance a visual appeal, but also align with um, our goals as a city. Um, it would have some community impact. So um, what is the interaction with it and how does it spark, would it spark a conversation? Um, and then also it would have to be durable um, and maintainable um, throughout the exhibition period. Um, and I think I forgot to mention, we'd be looking at installing um, spring next year um, and for a two year show. So something rotating every two years. So the estimated timeline would be um, today, um, I wanted to open this up for discussion um, and I'd really love to hear your feedback or yes, no, don't like it, whatever, <laughs> it's okay. Um, and, and then in October, I would come back with um, the project plan um, that would be approved. Um, so we could start moving forward with a request for proposals. Um, the selection panel would meet in December um, APPC would approve the final artists because that would be um, using public art funds. Um, and then we'd work on contracts and work on the artwork installations. Um, and then after that, I didn't put that, but that's the ongoing programming um, that I would be able to hopefully use your assistance with, with um, what does this look like for our community outreach and the programming behind it. Um, so today for discussion, um, the temporary art walk name, I just saying temporary art walk, but do we want to call it something else? Um, the program goals and the duration, um, the theme and RFP <laughs> guidelines. All right. So, talk about it. Uh, I, well, first of all, I think this is great. So yeah. thank you for putting it together. Okay. Um, my initial feeling is that continuity, consistency, um, you know, are those are kind of primary concerns mm -hmm. in terms of establishing, um, you know, a kind of horizon that where people are expecting these things. Mm -hmm. and, the path. Yeah. And a second thought is that um, uh, I'm wondering if the decision to exclude lens based and performance work is, you know, a kind of hard line for you, or if there's perhaps room for 
uh, you know, a, a more expansive. I think uh, that's a great point, and it's something I would love to include. Um, being a two-year show, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't know how we would do that, but I'm also open to ideas. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's also something we really need to be looking at is, we do shows like this or sculptural work, what have you, but wh where, is, where are all those other types of art being intertwined in our programming? Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's something that's an add-on to this too. Um, I think it's unlikely yeah. that you would get proposals yeah. in that mold, but. Mm -hmm. I but I think that's a great item through. in the future that we can start looking at is that type of programming for arts and culture. Mm -hmm. um, how are we doing that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. Yes. So I'm thinking about the desire to have innovative, interactive, engaging kinds kind of artworks. And it makes me think about electric infrastructure. You know, how do you power things that are, mm -hmm. you know, can be illuminated or might have, um, you know, I don't know, some kind of in, interactive te technology. And so then, I'm, so I'm jumping, right to the RFP guidelines. Um, $5,000 is not a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And especially if it's open to US artists. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm thinking, okay, I'm an artist in New York City. And it's like, oh, I've got this piece, it'd be great. It's gonna take me thousands of dollars to ship this thing cross country. And there's, mm -hmm. uh, and, and then there's uh, the concern about, well, okay, it's out in public for two years. Mm -hmm. What about damage, vandalism, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. So I'm, I, I love the idea of doing this project, mm -hmm. but I'm concerned that there, there are a lot of details that mm -hmm. um, I'd love to see us work out okay. in order to make it really um, a viable project that can be successful. Mm -hmm. uh, one way to deal with the cost, because I, I, I've been involved with so many national and international exhibitions over the years, if you limit it to a, a closer geographic region, even California, mm -hmm. then the cost for transportation, the installation uh, challenges that artists have is, okay, well, if the artist is required within their five thousand dollars to get yeah. the artwork here, install it, and take it away, mm -hmm. um, then if they're closer, it's more affordable, and we'll get that. This goes to the other part of my concern: is the quality of the work. Mm -hmm. And so, um, if if artists have good quality work, but they can't afford to get it to us, that's going to be a, a concern. I, and I was thinking that as well. So the Art Walk in Napa, we actually only did 3,000 and we opened it up to US artists. Um, we used to only do West Coast um, and for 3,000, um, it is Napa, but amazing art. And I think Guerneville was maybe 2,000. Um, and so I upped it to five thinking, well, if we did eight installations, that's 40,000, you know, and then we have the concrete pad pouring. Um, but another conversation could be maybe we only do three or four art pieces. Um, I don't know how much of an art walk that would be, but we're limited by our budget. Um, and so I was always surprised on how many people throughout the US would want their art in Sonoma County. Really? Okay. Um, and again, if we don't um, get it, get people from out there and more California based then sometimes casting a larger net. Um, well, and I guess also in terms of um, waiting this election, uh, like we were talking about Rosalind, if we could uh, have a preference for California mm -hmm. artists, but if an artist from the Midwest or the East Coast wants to, mm -hmm. you know, throw their name in, in, the, in the hat there, you know, sure, I mean, yeah. why not? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's just a thought, but uh, I think um, sort of semi-permanent, large-scale, resource-intensive sculpture um, sort of weights the selection criteria towards a certain um, certain level of establishment, and it may be interesting to um, you know kind of look for. Uh, more under-resourced artists, mm -hmm. and you know, maybe make make an effort to engage with those people as well. 
potentially. It's a little, little yeah. amorphous, but no, I love yeah. that. Sure. I'm just thinking of like the verbiage, I guess, yeah. or my brain was thinking of like how mm -hmm. how do we start? How do we become very inclusive in this call um, and have it be a very diverse type of bar show as well? It, it, could we find a, I, this is just off the top of my head, but a, a site or something on this pathway that you're sort of creating in your mind that we could um, open up a potential place where many people could put smaller things, like in a sense a gallery or a, I, I mean, I know you wanted to go white, but in some ways like creating the idea that there would be one place that would have a grid of, you know, I don't know. Maybe that's us getting too involved in the deciding what could be, but it would have to be durable for two years, right? Or even if it was for one year, whatever we chose that. So mm -hmm. I, I automatically think of safety and weather and, and vandalism and clean, you know all of yeah. that. So well, I'm thinking that probably have to be against some sort of wall. Mm -hmm. We actually, it could yeah. So if it was something that was installed on a wall, we'd have to know what wall we could even put a hole in. Um, yeah. Those are all options, depending, right? right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what, yeah. that, but I was just trying to think about. Different kind of off process. of what Nathan was saying, it made me think of scale. And mm -hmm. scale alone, a lot of people can't afford to have a studio to produce something that large or store it. And, but you still could tap in on it. <laughs> so, a, yeah. another question I have, and, and this actually, I, I have, a, I, I did some um, consulting up in Healdsburg on mm -hmm. a public art project. and. <laughs> I was actually surprised to find out that I, I didn't know this, but there's a very well known curator and, and um, former museum director, Graham Beale, who is retired now, mm -hmm. lives in Healdsburg. And he, he submitted a formal complaint about a work of uh, what was described as plop art mm -hmm. that was, you know, uh, it installed um, right framed perfectly by his window and he hates looking at it because <laughs> it has no it's just like this sculpture was just plopped there without any really real concern for the site and a sense of place and i love the idea that we have an art walk that and and some some of what you wrote uh in the uh description really is about and, um, energizing a, a, mm -hmm. a site, and it, if we think about a sense of place and and how these works really uh, make sense for their particular mm -hmm. placement, so it's not just random sculpture plopped on on a okay. concrete pad. And I'm not exactly sure if we can maybe name it or have some you know goals and or a theme that can help us to get beyond maybe a perception that it's just, okay, these are just a bunch of random sculptures. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, with, with well, that, would, so that would be a part with the selection panel as yeah. well. When we start yeah. looking, we have 20 potential locations and we are selecting mm -hmm. eight pieces of art and we have a hundred applicants. Okay, so let's start going through and really starting to design what is this, what is this going to be for the community, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, in some ways, this is a complicated example, but I think the, the memorial project on the Prince Greenway that was put up by the Butterfly and other artists there um, is, a, is an interesting example. It may not be, I don't know, I don't know how it would fit into a program like this or if that's something they would be interested in, but you know, it's, there are there are lots of different yeah, yeah. examples. When you say memorial, is that, are you speaking of the art? I don't, I'm not as familiar. I mean, I've taken a walk down there. They're, just all the pieces they have along that the, area? The, the, the rock, the painted rock oh. memorial project. That they came, it came up us. in the meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I just heard a report that that was actually already peeling. And yeah, I mean, that may be true. Not, I haven't been. I just, like, last week someone approached me about it and uh -huh. said it didn't look good. And I, uh -huh. I haven't been down there, but I just I didn't know if you were sorting that as like this is a really successful one and I think in some respects it is yeah well I know there's other work uh -huh. along there that I've viewed. but it's something it may not be appropriate for this, this particular discussion but I think it's something to think about yeah. as a location as a as a way to approach uh, just clarifying because I want to understand as a, uh, as a kind of methodology or, or, or an instance where um, a community is yeah you know has established a a work of art. Space yeah. and a work of art. Yeah. Yeah. It would be okay. an installation piece, I would see that. Yeah. So if it was a, if that work had already been completed and they submitted it, 
here's this is I would like to install it and that would be right. a valid submission for something like this mm -hmm. and then the jury would have to say well what, what does this fit our goals yeah. and what would the location for that be or it's on the map exactly. I mean, that's the other thing is there are existing works that may or may not have a place on the on the map on the permanent uh -huh. on the permanent art map I don't know I, I was thinking of the map that you Proposed or even on an art walk screen. map. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this this one would be its own rotating program of art, and then we have our permanent collection mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. um, which is something we can address again in the future as, as it needs to be addressed on, on on the programming behind our permanent collection. Yeah. So those would be the two mm -hmm. that we would have that we'd be working with. I kind of like the idea of um, the temporary, like not using temporary forward. You know, not having. I mean, I know that's just. Mm -hmm. A working thing, but that could be a subscript on the but something that would and I don't I'd like to have some time to think about mm -hmm. that. But um, I was even thinking of the idea of this is not a, a, a title, but the concept of if you had you pour different kinds of bases, if you had some like in a sense plinth, you know, like larger like things that raise artwork up above the someone kicking it, mm -hmm. but they could still access it if it's at site or, you know, planes where they could, we could attach thing, you know, just there would be some sort of, and that would be a the, variety of that would be the goal. That so I'm waiting on some quotes right now, one internal, one external quote on the pouring of concrete pads and just yeah. a basic quote to see, I'm yeah. looking at our $75,000 that we've set aside, how much can we start with? Right. right, but as we get these concrete pads poured that are movable, some of them, then mm -hmm. we store them at the courtyard after, and we start rotating them out. So, so we're not hindered by like, well, we only have this type of pad, and we have to fit our exactly. Pad. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. The other thing we're looking at is, is are we going to pour some temporary or um, permanent pads around too on some of these locations that um, do need to be <laughs> unified? Um, and so there's also this the addition of long term goals with this. If this is still a long-term goal, but short-term of where we want, we would like to get something okay. going next year. Mm -hmm. So, so we have that bigger vision of, of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I quickly, I do have a stop at five thirty. I need to yeah. conscious of time, mm -hmm. uh, and then I wanted to talk a little bit about the theme. Um, I'm concerned with. I like the idea of urban renewal as a theme, but I wonder if it would restrict certain. I mean, be restrictive. Uh, I know that there is a lot of great artwork that comes out mm -hmm. that is uh, celebratory of our natural environment and I wonder if that theme would um, kind of make um, so that we wouldn't get submissions that were very celebratory of our natural space. And we could do no theme. I mean I've done shows before where there isn't a specific theme but then when the jury's meeting um, that's something in, that you have in your mind that they all do need to start to work together. So I mean that's, that's a completely an option too. I'm, I'm more in favor of a no theme. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, you had a map with some possible yeah. locations. And most of them, yeah, OK, I, I did remember. So most of them follow what appears to be a path of mm -hmm. sorts uh, with just one outlier. Uh, would, it, would it be possible for us to actually take a walk along, like physically go and walk the path and just say, okay, what are we thinking about? For me, I know that would really help me get my head around, well, what are we trying to accomplish? What are the opportunities here? You know, how does the, how does this uh, program actually be, become realized uh, in, in its physical reality? Um, as a public meeting, um, we I believe we would have to we have to have a, a spot to meet. Um, I have started putting together um, all of these actually have their own slides um, because I've internally been going through and starting to mark up saying what needs to be done here. Um, and so as we work through that, um, and, and I could share the slides, but I still need to talk to different property owners and all of that. You know, right? so. Um, so maybe on your own time, if you're walking around downtown um, and starting to look at wh how, what are all these sites? Because we can we can end up marking 30 different sites, but we'll use eight for the show, um, depending on the artwork. Because the last thing I want is the plop art. Uh, this just doesn't fit. It's a great sculpture, but it's being blocked by the trees, and you can't approach it, um, right? Yeah. 
if this is a long-term kind of project, it might make sense to consult with somebody like Mark DeSuvero or county staff about um, standardizing your uh, attachment point to the pavement so that that could be included in the RFP and you don't have to think about how each individual work is anchored to the pad. Standardizing the attachment from the sculpture. Mm -hmm. If there's some kind of mounting flange that the artists can integrate into their design process. I mean, I've always just had the different anchors depending on the sculpture, but I don't point. know. Yeah. Might streamline things if it's a mm -hmm. there are but, a lot of submissions coming. But also, if the artwork, if the expectation is that the artwork submitted are existing artworks, mm -hmm. that yeah. might be very difficult to. I it's mean, already made. Yeah, I, that is an interesting thought. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of room. Oh, I know. <laughs> okay. Any comments? Questions, right? No, so, so, Meredith, will you share this um, <laughs> this uh, slide presentation with us when you? She did. Uh, oh, she. It was in the agenda. Mm -hmm. Oh, was it? Yes. <clears throat> Why? How did I miss it? I saw the other one. Okay. Can you show oh, us that timeline again, the slide, please? Mm -hmm. So ideally, I come back in October. Um, it does sound um, that you'll probably want to take some time and think more about this, too. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's appropriate for me to come back for the project plan in October. Um, we could also do a special meeting in October to get approval of that, so I could move it forward. Um, I'd also, it's contracts take a long time, calls for art take a long time mm -hmm. to get this um, in spring. Um, so I'd be happy to almost bring it forth to another discussion in October, um, if you guys would like, um, to make sure also I want to get it right, as right as we can. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> um, I value your opinion, so. I think it's great that you know, we have this project to, to work on. I mean, I think it would be great for the city and great for artists. Um, it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, it would be good to have another discussion in October. Okay. And then if we need a special meeting mm -hmm. to wrap it up, then that would be okay. definitely. I don't know what it was. I agree. I think okay. so too. Okay. Anything else you want to say about that, Meredith, for today? Um, thank you. Thank you. So then, we do do public comment even if there's not. Oh, a we do. Oh, public. I can go ahead and say it. Okay. Yeah, just so it's on the record. Is there any front. public comment on this item? No. Nope. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can move. All right. So we've completed that. Seven point five public art tour group. Should we table that since it's going to be, if we definitely want to discuss, have a longer discussion about that in the time that we need to. I think it looks really great. Just okay. it has, um, I'd be okay tabling that. I, I did realize I would actually really wanted to uh, put together some slides for it um, to review what we already have in place. Okay. Um, and so I was seeking approval today of it, um, but I'm okay um, if you want a motion to um, table it to October 7th meeting. Do you think we need that? Um, sorry, uh, information about what content you would put together on those slides. Would it just be kind of like a survey overview of so, what our goals are? Yeah, we can start for a couple minutes, I guess. Um, I was putting this together today and um, I wanted to draft up for you um, what we already have in place um, because um, from watching the past meetings and the strategic plan um, toolkit was brought up a lot. Um, and so I started to dive into, well, what other cities or counties have these toolkits and what do we already have um, and, and what is needed? Um, so I broke down what our master plan was with our vision and goals, um, our policy with um, the role of APPC, the approval of projects, selection panel. Um, we have the development requirements for art, um, and then we have the guidelines for art. Um, missing in the guidelines for art was um, everything um, besides murals. And so this form um, that I put together would be for every type of art. 
Um, and we would be looking to um, remove the mural guidelines form um, and um, move forward with a public art proposal form that would be in Spanish, English, a fillable form, et cetera. And again, we could develop some type of community outreach around, around this. So um, if a student wants to put some artwork in Courthouse Square, well, how do they go about that? Um, and this would be their first step. Okay. Um, so this would make it available for everyone. I think that would be a really useful conversation for us to have mm -hmm. with aides, um, mm -hmm. with Absolutely. visual aid. Mm -hmm. so I agree. I, I agree with paneling this or, or tabling this yeah. for the next discussion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mary, what you meant? Can we do that? Is it a conversation or does that need to be a motion? And you see a, a motion because okay. we had a motion to So moved. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need a second? Okay. Second. Okay. In October meeting. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, and then we'll take a vote now. Uh, Chair Baumgartner? Yes. Vice Chair Keeper? Yes. Committee Member Faulkner? Yes. Uh, Committee Member Puentes? Yes. Committee Member Azadarian? Yes. Committee Member Nathan? Yes. Perfect. Did you call for public comment on that? I don't, or was that the? We called, did we? we called for public comment on 7.4. We will still oh. have to call for public okay. comment on 7.4. Okay. 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 I couldn't remember okay. that one. That yeah. Is that now the public comment to 7.5? Looks like there's no public okay. comment. Okay, I think we're good. Okay. I'm just good to be keeping these. Okay, um, one more. Oh, 7.5? 7.6? 7.6, yes. 7.6. Thank you. Um, we are looking for volunteers. So we have two um, art shows that will be hanging at the Finley Center. Um, one is this Friday, the Pomo Project um, at the Senior Center from 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. And then the other is Thursday, September 26. Um, that as well is from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So if you um, are interested in volunteering, please send me an email um, and I can get you connected with uh, the best time that works for you and what's needed. Um, also to note that we do have two um, art openings um, that will be before our next meeting. Okay. So Thursday, October 3rd, from 5 to 7, um, is for the California Indian Museum and Cultural Center um, at the Finley Center. And then Friday, October 4th, is from 5 to 7, um, and that's a POMO project um, at the Senior Center. And I will um, email those out as well so that you have yeah. that. Great. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Um, public comment on any of that? Should we have to? Yes. Um, I, I have a Sorry. question. Yes. If if uh, we can volunteer for part of that time, mm -hmm. like not the whole nine to three, but I could give yeah. it. Yeah. That, that would be great. Question. Yes, yeah. Yeah. One, okay. one hour, two hours goes a long way okay. um, with helping. Okay. okay, okay, it's good to know. Excellent. Um, uh, can I just add also if we do, if, would we get some contact in? But would be Bryce that would be doing the. So we get to have a way of getting a hold of him. Or yep. Uh, yep. Just if you could include that. Contact me, and then and then I'll um, yeah. I'll schedule yes. everything. Perfect. Great. All right. Okay. Public comment about the Finley shows. Okay. No motion or vote needed on that. The last thing is number eight committee member reports, general comments, something to put on the agenda ahead of time, another agenda. I'm looking forward to our discussions that we've moved to the next agenda. <laughs> <laughs> for a future agenda and this is just me but I feel like with the budget I don't really understand our budget as it's gone I was asking Meredith when we pre previewed our agenda like when does the budget start when does it stop and I don't know what we're responsible for having access to and you have many other projects that don't mm -hmm. at all deal with the art budget that you're involved in mm -hmm. and all of you are but it would really help me if we could see a couple of years of our budgets and what this year's mm -hmm. budget is I I'm, I'm moving or asking that we could get that on, but I won't be here in October. I have to go East Coast, but um, in November we could have a meeting that showed the flow of money to us and what we have and what we spent for the last two years and what we still have, because I just don't understand where the money's going, even like the Lusa Sawa, 300,000, like, where did that money come from? Not that I was on the agenda item for um, last month. Yeah. Um, I reviewed it, but what I'll do is I'll bring that over and then... Um, With a history of two years I before? can do a history and then, um, okay. and I can also, as we review the toolkit, we'll review APPC's role. Okay. Um, because that may make more sense on the approval process, um, yeah. whether it's public art funds. Um, and that would be so um, helpful. Uh, and that's, I mean, I'm, some people can glance at a spreadsheet and just get it. And mm -hmm. I need a lot more of a 
kind of people telling me where the piles okay. are. Okay, no so problem. I would love that. I do recall that um, there was a, a budget discussion about this year in that uh, there were no new projects coming online, but that we're actually uh, this year is really looking at um, the Im implementation of previous uh, projects that were approved. And so that was really useful information just as a, as a general overview. <laughs> but then clearly we're looking at new projects coming online in 2025 yeah. and beyond. No, and beyond. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Anyone else have something to say? Intervene. Okay. It's been a really long meeting. Thanks yeah. to everyone for their patience and attention and involvement. Um, next regular meeting will be on Monday, October 7th. And thank you. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.